given by Anshemanet, the first speaker. There were 12 great families in Yanini. There were also 12 tribes in Haipta and early Egypt. The figure 12 has always had a great meaning. The 12 Haiptian and Egyptian peoples were divided by land, canal and water boundaries. The Jabukas, who inhabited the land known to you as North America, were of the 12 peoples of Yanini. It was a country which was raised out of the waters 50,000 years after the sinking of Lamana, today known as Atlantis. Another of the Yanihian peoples lived in ancient Avalon, also a portion of Yanini. They were known then as the Wushnas. You, Lilinthus, and Vinshuno, were born into the Wushnas. Narrators note, the people being addressed here are members of the group of solar teachings, in Glastonbury, England. The first Aztecs of the South American continent were not of Yanini, but were an offshoot from the Yanihis. The present ruins of the Aztecs date back to the Lamanian period. The twelve tribes of Israel are all out in the east, none are in Britain. End, first guest, given by Aminaris, the second speaker. I have just returned from the land you know as Egypt, the land of the pyramids and sphinx. The world knows very little of these great buildings. Archaeologists and Egyptologists have endeavored to discover the age of these structure from the measurements purloined from them. The Haiptians were a gloriously spiritual race, great worshippers of God, and in one sense the forerunners of the future scientists of the world. They knew of the power of thought through love by which the great pyramids were raised, assisted by the hierarchy of God. These ancient buildings were constructed of the amethyst solar stone, covered over later by one of the pharaohs of Egypt by placing a layer of stone over them to preserve them. Footnote, the further a planet falls from the solar planet the less effective become the great rays of God. This brings about a change in matter and eventual disintegration. When occasional demands of power can be centralized on any particular part or can be instantly withdrawn, for reasons unknown to man, yet not hidden from man, which causes the instant collapse of matter. What a vision of beauty these temple pyramids must have been. Great temples of worship dedicated to the great artisan of creation, for the teaching of truth and of knowledge of the universes of God. These buildings were never intended as burial places for the dead, but temples in which to worship God. Footnote, no buildings dedicated to the adoration of God should be used for the interment of mortals. And note, the Haiptians knew the pyramid form was symbolic of knowledge and still is, the double pyramid being the solar sign of the Lord and Lehi Haya. Narrators note, we believe this Lord to be Archangel Metatron, and note, he who controls the Krinalha cosmic ray, the indigo ray of knowledge, not intellect, for God. The Haiptians brought the memory of this sign, the pyramid form, from the planet of Tash, so they built their places of worship in pyramid form. Footnote, memory and knowledge in the eternal sense are of the soul, not the brain, memory by heart it is said. The soul or God breath rests in the left ventricle of the heart, and note, use of the temples in these days had nothing to do with black magic. The Haiptians were also aware of the fact that the amethyst solar stone, or Mata stone from the seventh solar plane, is a stone of great power and love. Therefore in these days, this was the power used for the simple manipulation of these great stones, through the power of thought. The pyramids were hollow and this great race worshipped God as the Yanihians worshipped the great father mother. When you go to Egypt, think of the bygone period of 3,500,000 years. Dwell upon the great power of thought. The Lord Mikal has already told you what lies beneath the Sphinx. The land of Egypt is soaked with the power ray of God. We come to tell you these things instructed by the Lord Mikal. End, second speaker. Ra Shamit, the final speaker. I greet you, my friends. We have not met before. My name is Ra Shamit, the Haiptian. I have come from the planet of Tash, which lies within the 10th solar system of this 12th universe. Footnote, see the Lord Mikal's book The 12 Universes of God, part of the Winds of Truth series. And note, I have the great privilege to be master of the planet of Tash, for God. After the sinking of Lamana, only 6,000 Lamanhians were left in the world. It was at this period that the souls from the planet of Tash were reborn into Haipta. You will remember the Lord Mikal tells you in his book, The Winds of Truth, that Egypt survived destruction in the sinking of Lamana. Therefore, the Haiptians intermarried with this remnant of Lamanhians, the best of them, to help raise them. Many Haiptians incarnated in Persia and Greece in later periods. Your present races of Earth hold a very large proportion of Haiptians. And, final speaker, 